Hey, shalom everyone. Rabbi Yehudi here. I have a question for you. Um, if you want to learn to fly uh, a plane, an airplane, are you going to be able to learn to fly by just reading books about flying? Uh, no, you're not. You just can't read, unless you're a savant, you're just not going to read a book, jump into a cockpit, and automatically know how to fly. What's it take to learn how to fly? To actually fly. To actually get in the cockpit and have somebody instruct you and teach you to fly and get experience with the controls and feeling the, the wings beneath you, so to speak, and, and flying. That's the only way you're going to learn how to fly is to fly, right? Let me ask you another question. How are you going to, to romance your spouse, to fall more deeply and intimately in love with your spouse, to have a deeper and more intimate relationship with your spouse? Are you going to be able to do that by reading love letters that other people have written to their spouses? No. That's not going to draw you closer to your spouse. You may get some pretty nifty ideas on maybe things to try in wooing and romancing your spouse, but you're simply not going to draw closer to your spouse and have a more intimate and deep relationship with your spouse by just reading love letters other people have written to their spouses. You're, how are you going to do it then? You actually have to engage your spouse. You yourself have to write love letters to your spouse. You yourself have to woo and date and, and uh, get to know your spouse and romance them yourself. There's no other way that you can do it. And you have these people that, that are searching for something that they feel is missing. You know, this closeness, this intimacy, this, this secret inward knowledge of God. And they think they're going to obtain it by reading esoteric works, by reading the Kabbalah, by reading the Zohar, by reading all these mystical writings. You're not going to get intimate with Hashem by reading these books. You're just not going to do it. So what's it take? It takes a life of sincerity. It takes a life of sacrifice. It, it, it takes, you know, just as you're not going to be able to get to know your spouse better or fall more deeply in love with your spouse by reading love letters that other people wrote to their spouses, in the same way, you're not going to get close to God. You're not going to, to have this special relationship where he speaks to you, where you can feel him, where you can smell him, where you can hear him, where he just reveals things to you where he speaks to you on such an intimate and prophetic and revelatory level. You know, this 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 secret intimate place that that the prophet shared with him, that the prophets had with him. You know, that that uh, this this deepness, this intimacy, this intimacy, this 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 secret knowledge that that was gained by the rabbis and sages of blessed memory who wrote sections of the Kabbalah and the Zohar. How did they do it? They didn't do it by just writing about it and studying it. They did it by engaging. You know, uh, there's a reason why Orthodox Jews do not study, or they're not permitted, let's say, to study uh, mystical and esoteric and Kabbalistic and Zohar literature until the age of 40. There's a reason for that. Because even in the rabbinic literature, it tells about four men who studied Kabbalah, and only one of them came out unscathed. One committed suicide. The other committed blasphemy, and the other became an apostate, and only one came out saved. I don't like those odds. I'm 39, and I was not raised in Orthodox Judaism, so therefore I'm not going to touch the Kabbalah. I have no business touching the Zohar or the Kabbalah. Do I know about it? Do I know a lot about it? Sure I do. Why? Because I'm a rabbi and I have to. But I have enough sense not to study it. I'm not ready for that. See, everything, everything God wants you to know, everything important that God wants you to know is right there in his word, in the Torah, in the Tanakh, in the Brit Hadesha. That's all you need, folks. Everything else is just gravy, okay? You, you, you want that intimacy? You want that, 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 that esoteric and secret knowledge? You can't read about it in books and obtain it. You've got to experience it for yourself. There's no shortcuts. There's no lazy man's way to get to it. There's no, there's no fast track. You have to fall madly, deeply, and passionately in love with Hashem yourself. You have to pray. Get in a quiet place and pray. 
and not just, oh, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the many blessings. Lord, bless my mom, bless my dad, bless my teacher. No. And it's not going to happen by, you know, Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bekorbanu. It's not going to happen that way either. I'm talking about an intimate conversation with God, the way you would talk to a lover, the way you would talk to a friend. You know, uh, 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 not just this one-way conversation, but a two-way conversation where you talk to Hashem and then you get quiet and you listen for that still small voice and you hear Him. When you read uh, His Word and say, Abba, open up your Word, help me to know what it's trying to say to me so I can apply it to my life, speak to me through your Word. It's when you pray, when you praise and worship, when you lose yourself, when you lose all sense and all track of time, when you have that praise and worship CD in, or when you're just singing songs into Hashem, and getting into that secret and intimate place where you just lose all inhibitions and, and where you lose all sense of surroundings and all sense of time. It's when you pray and when you fast. Are you really willing to do that? Are you willing to fast? You're really willing to dig in your heels, you know, and go without food for days and be in that intimate and secret place with him. There's no fast track, okay? That's what it takes. So, you know, just get it out of your head and get, get, get this idea out that you have to have all this extra rabbinical and mystical literature. If you're not ready for it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kill you. It's going to ruin you. It's going to destroy you. You know, just like a toddler. You don't hand them the keys, you know, to to uh, um, a Harley Davidson and say, "Here, go crazy." No, he starts out on a big wheel. Then he moves up to a tricycle. Then he moves up to a bicycle with training wheels. Then he moves up to a bicycle. Then he moves up to a moped. Then he moves up to a dirt bike. Then he moves up to the Harley Davidson. And we're not just talking about. You know, oh, a couple weeks. We're talking about years. You know, just because you were raised in church and raised in Sunday school and ho heard all the Bible stories doesn't mean that you know the Bible. Buddy, you've only just scratched the surface. That's it. You've just scratched the surface. You know, his his word and his mercies are new every morning. It's like fresh baked, break, baked bread. I'm telling you, every time I read the word, I, I see a new facet. I see something new, and I've been reading it for years. I can never get tired of it. can never get old to me. All you need to know is there. And then when you get intimate with him, huh, that's when that revelation comes. That's when that secret knowledge and esoteric stuff and that mystical stuff, that deep stuff comes, is when you're intimate with him. Because he's going to tell you and give it to you one-on-one -on -one through, through the Ruach HaKodesh, through the Holy Spirit. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to wait upon. There's no fast track. And, second of all, another thing that I wanted to bring up. Uh, how do they train people to find counterfeit bills? Do they give them a whole bunch of different counterfeit bills and have them look at it up close with a magnifying glass or a microscope and feel it and lick it and taste it and smell it and touch it? No. For people to spot counterfeits, they have nothing to do with counterfeit. They study the real 24-7 for years and years and years. They touch, they feel, they smell, and they count the money for years, real dollar bills, real minted genuine article bills. And then after a few years, somebody will slip in and counterfeit, and they'll be counting the money and wait, hold on a second, wait, something's not right. And then they pull out the counterfeit bill and they're able to spot it. How are they able to spot that counterfeit bill? By studying the real and the truth and the authentic all the time. You know, there's no sense in getting into all this anti-missionary crap. All this anti-missionary literature and all their arguments. I don't give I don't give a rat's patootie about their arguments. Why? Because I'm studying the truth. I'm studying the real. I'm studying the word of God all the time. And I'm studying the apologetics behind the word of God. There's many books out there that are great in apologetics. Many good websites. The RefinersFire.com. The RealMessiah.com. Answering Jewish Objections to Jesus, Volumes 1 through 5. That's going to give you all the, the, all the truth all the hardcore stuff, all the genuine article truth that you need to know to be able to spot the counterfeit, to be able to spot the lie, to be able to spot the false doctrine, to be able to spot the anti-missionary crap and agenda that's out there. You don't need to be studying their crap because I guarantee you if you do, you will lose your faith. You know what? I, I'm paraphrasing, but do you know what Einstein said at one time? 
He says, I've killed God. He was born and raised uh, as a person of faith. But he says that, that, that he feels that he has killed God. Why? Because he's try scientifically he tried to take apart the molecules and atoms to such a degree that he couldn't put it back together anymore. And it killed his faith. So focus on the word of God. Focus on the real. Focus on the genuine. Focus on a personal and intimate relationship with him, not just reading about it. You know, it's one thing you know, to read about motorcycles. Ooh, but boy, it's another thing to ride one. It's not the same. It's not the same, folks. And that's just like, you know, a personal intimate relationship with God. It's one thing to read about all this stuff. It's another thing to actually do it. So I just kind of wanted to throw this out there because I've been getting a lot of emails and a lot of questions about some Kabbalistic stuff, some, some anti-missionary stuff. So I decided to kind of throw this video together and hopefully that you, you understand, you see where I'm coming from, uh, because I ultimately care about your soul, and, and, and I care about your personal and intimate relationship with God and, and, and where you're at and where you're coming from in that respect. That's all, you know, it, it's, it's to keep you safe. You know, it's to keep you safe and keep you on track and keep you where you need to be. You don't need to get off on the, all this other stuff. All right? So thank you for watching. Shalom and Shavuotov.